So now that I have the electronic level done and I have my fine optical plumb, I've opened a job. Now I need to go into the instrument setup so that I can actually start surveying with this thing. So this is gonna be the same process for Arty Astro or one position, at least the way that I'm doing it. So keep in mind with this software, there's a lot of ways to do these things, but this seems to be the most proper across the board way to do it for us as, as a four sevens. So looking at the screen, we're connected. We're gonna go into measure and station setup. So this would be a good time to have a, a surface observation met handy that's recent or a uh, Kestrel. And what we need is the pressure and the temperature in Fahrenheit. So right now I have about 91 degrees Fahrenheit outside. And that pressure is going to be 980 millibars and I will then select accept okay and then what it's asking for here is instrument point name and instrument height so preferably we start over a point our OS the point that we're actually plumb over is going to be a known position so luckily for us ours is and we are over PC 29 so I'm going to find PC-29 in my Pershing trig list. And once I have that handy, I'm going to hit this drop down arrow. If I go into list, this will contain all the points that I have uh, keyed in or surveyed so far. This is a brand new job, so there's nothing in there. So I'll press escape. I'll hit that drop down again, and I will do key in. So I simply put in everything it asks for. PC 29. I put in that easting. I put in the northing. and I'm going to check that it is a control point. So this is a high order known point that I'm over. And once I have all that information in from the trig list, I can select store. Now it's asking for the instrument height. So I would measure this the exact same way that I measure the uh, GPSS uh, base station. So if we actually look at the instrument, we have two points of reference. We have a notch right here. So that would be from the fine point of aim on the OS to this notch would be where we're measuring the instrument height. Or we can do it to this little crosshair here and that's gonna be telescope height. So what I recommend is doing telescope height and I simply run my ruler down, bring it up to here, record it in meters. So what I have is one point 582 meters and I'll simply press enter and accept. So now the instrument is totally set up and I need to figure out what my rear station is going to be otherwise known as my back sight and what my forward station is going to be otherwise known as my foresight. So the rear station is what I'm going to be siding in on first and then I'm going to put either balls balls 0 0.150 as the back sight input or I'm going to be putting the known azimuth for the back sight. Okay, so first step, looking at the S7. If the S7 is upside down, you want to make that right side up and this is known as direct mode. If it's upside down like so where the S7 is upside down and so is the tremble, then that means it's in uh, reverse mode or phase two. So this is phase one or direct, and this is phase two or reverse. A lot of different ways to name these things. So we're gonna start indirect 
I'm going to use quad four as my rear station. So looking at the shotgun sight on top, I can get close. And looking through, if I can't see anything, then on the side here, this is my sight focus for the telescope. If I can't see my crosshairs, I spin the gray piece on the eyepiece, and that'll allow me to see my crosshairs. So I get the crosshairs nice and crisp, and then I get my sight nice and crisp. So I'll sight back in over there. My crosshairs are good. Now I just need to see what I'm looking at. I get that target as focused as possible and then I get my crosshairs exactly over that fine point of aim. So once I'm sighted in I'm not going to touch it anymore and I come back to the screen and ask me a few things. Ask for a back sight point name so it's going to be quad four face one right as in quad four the face one direction. And this is going to ask for a backsight height. So if you have like a prism on a target or something of that nature that you can get a height for, you can input that. I don't have a height for quad four, so I'm just going to leave that blank. And then I ask for an azimuth. What we're going to do, we're going to start with balls, balls, 0 0.150, which is essentially kind of an arbitrary number at this point. But we're going to start with balls, balls, 0 0.150, sighted in on the rear station. And we're going to go down here to method, and it's going to be angles only. See now, if I had a prism out there, I could do angles and distance. But since I don't have a prism, I don't want to select the distance option because that could mess up my survey. If I press measure and there's no prism, it'll begin to search for it on its own. And then before I press measure, the last thing I want to check is select the S7 icon on the right and make sure that auto lock is not highlighted. If it is highlighted, I'm going to uncheck that. That's only for prisms. If it's good, I'll press escape. Everything's keyed in and I'll press measure. And what we see here, we have a horizontal angle and a vertical angle to the rear station or the back side, so quad four. So I would record the horizontal angle. And for this uh, specific part for the rear station, I do not require verticals. So I'm just gonna disregard the vertical for the rear station. So I record the horizontal angle Press store. And now, in the direct mode, I'm going to turn to the forward station. So I'm going to turn to and side in the forward station. Again, I'll probably have to refocus it every time I side in on a different target. Use my fine adjustments to get perfectly sided in. And once I'm there, I come back to the screen. I'm gonna go into measure, measure topo. And I'm gonna name it. So this reading, I'm still in face one. So this is gonna be quad one, face one. And the method is gonna be angles only and I do not know the target height at this time. So I'll just press enter and measure. Now we have a horizontal and a vertical angle in mills to the forward station. I'm going to properly record that. Once I have it, I'll press store. And now it's time for me to go into the phase two or reverse mode. So I can either do it manually by physically plunging the scope and turning it the other direction and sighting in again. Or, if we see here on the front, that very leftmost button with the two arrow ends, if I press that, 
it'll do a pretty good job of plunging the scope for me and then I just have to do my fine adjustments. So either way, whatever works for you. So I'm gonna get it in that reverse mode where the trimble is upside down, the S7 is upside down, and I'm gonna sight back in on the forward station. Take my time, get perfectly sighted in. Once I'm there, I'll stop touching it. I'll come back to the TSC3 screen and it's gonna be quad one, phase two. It named itself, uh, method, angles only, still don't know the target height. I'll press enter and measure. So we have the horizontal and vertical angle to the forward station, but for the reverse readings, you're gonna record those in the proper spaces. And once we have those written down, we'll press store. And now it's time for our closing angle. So what this means is we started on the rear station and we're gonna end on it in the reverse mode. So we're still in reverse mode. I'll simply turn back to the rear station, side in, make sure I'm focused. And once I'm there, I come back to the TSC3 screen. This is going to be quad four, face two, as in the point name is actually quad four and it's in the face two mode. And I'll do this in angles only. I'll press enter and measure. So now we have the horizontal and vertical reverse readings for the rear station. Again, for this example, the rear station does not require vertical angles. It typically does not in one position angles, so I'm just gonna record that horizontal angle value uh, where it goes. And once I have that, I'm gonna press store. And that's gonna be the end of actually manually doing my one position angles. Now I can press escape. And let's say I, uh, I wasn't able to record one of those points or I, uh, I forgot to record it before I press store. I can go into jobs, point manager. And here's everything that we did. Okay, so PC21, quad one, face one and two, quad four, face one and two. So if I need to see the uh, horizontal and vertical values, I can go to display, display HAVA SD raw. And we see we have all the horizontal values and all the vertical values that I can re-record. You can also click on these and it'll give you a bit more information through the pages. So keep in mind, if you're gonna continue and do another one position angle, you should start a new job because there's a good chance you'll have some uh, identical names for these points and you'll start to run into some problems as far as storing them. So every time you start a new one position, uh, RD Astro, any kind of survey, you wanna start a new job and save those files for that specific survey.